Hey, Stephen Smith here, and I believe that I have a word from the Lord for you today. And that word is to live in the light. That's right, we've been talking a lot about light lately, but this is actually going to help us to see how important light really is in our own lives. We may look at a couple of scientific things, but I promise not to go geeky on you, I promise. Okay, so what I wanted to say is, is that, you know, in the very beginning, God created the sun and the moon and the earth and the stars and everything, but the first thing he did was he created light. He said, light be, and it was. And then four days later, he created the sun, the moon, the stars, and the earth. It's really interesting the way we, we, if we look at this. So God had to create the literal building blocks of all of creation first, and that actually begins with light. Did you know that light has three different elements? It is hydrogen, neon, and lithium. So light actually becomes a physical thing in our lives. It's not just something that happens when we turn the light, lights on. So this is the building blocks that God, cre God needed for all of creation, and he created those things first. God is a logical God. So when he said, light be, and light was, and he saw that that light was good, then he separated the light from the darkness. That's Genesis 1, 3, and 4. And we don't see until four days later where we see the sun, the moon, and the stars created. You know, one day I had an idea of what that would look like. I thought to myself, what would that be like? And I imagined when God said, light be, then all of a sudden, moving at the speed of light, which is 670,616,629 miles per hour, light broke out from the source of God speaking it all the way out to the very edges of the universe. And it's continued on now for 6,000 years. It's amazing how fast that's actually moving. And we may not actually comprehend that. And in fact, we may think that's totally impossible to measure. But did you know that it takes literally eight minutes and 20 seconds for light to reach us from the sun to the earth? That's how important that really is. And yet if God had not created light, we would never be able to appreciate all of his creation or anything else. In Genesis 1.5, it says, God called the light day and the darkness night, and evening passed and the morning came, marking the first day. So we had a, a location that God actually made the first day. So now we have a marker. God had to establish a day period of time so that all the other things could be created as well. You know, the other thing that we see about this passage is that God declared a difference between the lightness or the light and the darkness. And when we do that, now we have the establishment of light and day, or we have a, even the establishment of the difference between good and evil. You know, spiritually speaking, God also noticed that there was darkness and it was no longer there. So when he created light, light had no choice but to overcome the darkness. Darkness cannot overcome light, but light can always drive away darkness. It's a, it's a simple fact of nature, it's physics, and it's actually spiritual as well. In fact, John wrote this in his gospel to us. In John 1, 5, he says, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. So physically that's the case, and he also established that fact that Jesus Christ was doing the exact same thing. So if Jesus Christ is the light of the world and he's the overcomer of darkness, then that also means that he's overcome sin, evil, and death. Well, we also happen to know that in the spiritual sense, God provides us the sources for that as well. Not only is Jesus Christ, but the word, word itself, or in this case, the word himself. You know, in Psalms 119, 105, David tells us this, your word is a lamp and a guide to my feet and a light for my path. If we think about what the characteristics of light are, and if you can imagine yourself holding a lantern or a torch or something like that, the light is provided for our path, but it's not provided for the end goal, that end purpose for what we're here for. So we simply have to, by faith, follow the path that God has set before us. You know, in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus Christ called us the light of the world. He said, how can we possibly be the light and use the creative power of God unless we act like God and his own glory shines from us as a result. That's huge for us to understand because that simply means now that we're emitting light as we go along as well. Whether it's in the physical realm or in the spiritual realm, this fact is established. Isaiah 58, 10 and 11 tells us that, that, that we can do this. We can feed the hungry and help those in trouble and you know what happens? Our light then shines out of the darkness and the darkness around us will be as bright as noon. Well, that describes God himself, doesn't it? The Lord will guide us continually, giving us water when we are dry and restoring our strength. He will be like a wall, well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing spring. God promises, promises to sustain us 
as one of his sources of light in this world. So why don't we get all of that together and start living a life that actually reflects the light of God that comes off of us and reflects back into the world. You know, Jesus said that we could be overcomer of darknesses, darkness if we let, simply let our light shine. That's a beautiful opportunity for us to be able to take that next step in our Christian journey, isn't it? So this is the word that I believe that the Lord has for you today. I have created and provided for all mankind an eternal, unquenchable light to illuminate the path before them. Open your eyes and see all that my life reveals for you. When you do, you will see the truth of my perfect love for you. Well, I know that we've been talking about light a lot, and this one may have been a little bit scientific and everything, but hey, if we don't see the difference or the, the similarity between scientificness and the spiritualness in our world, then how can we possibly go forward with what God expects us to do? Well, I hope that this post has been a blessing for you. You're more than welcome to share it on Facebook, Instagram, Instagram Twitter. Um, you can go to YouTube and you can subscribe to our channel there. You can even go to our website at awfg.today. You can download copies of this message. You can download an MP3. You can even get the study notes. Well, any way that you decide to interact with us, I hope to really hear from you soon. And God bless you.